Hello and welcome to this edition of All About Hopkinton. The original HCAM series created to bring you the people and organizations that help make our community the great place that it is. I'm Mary Arnott. There are a lot of groups out there and a lot of people dedicating their time, energy, and talents to improve some aspect of life in Hopkinton. I am privileged to be sitting here talking with them and sharing their stories with you. Joining me today is Margie Wigan, teacher, volunteer, television show producer, author, I could go on and on. Welcome, Margie. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Well, I'm so glad you could find the time because you have so many things that you're involved in and doing. Your schedule just must be very, very busy. I have to write it down. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good way to keep track of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I want to start, though, with how did you come to Hopkinton? How long have you lived here? Uh, just so in case there's somebody who may not know you watching yes. the show. Thank you. They'll, they'll know how, when you came to Hopkington. Okay. Um, I first moved here uh, in 1986. And I lived on Lake Maspinock at the end of Pine Island Road in a little house that we renovated to be um, contemporary glass redwood siding. Beautiful house. Loved living on the lake. But um, we moved out after five years. And um, I moved back to Newton where I grew up. Mm -hmm. Then when I was looking for a house again, I again chose Hopkinton. And um, I just love it because of the schools, the people, the nature that's here. And um, you know, it's nice to be this close to Boston, Worcester, um, Rhode Island. Lots, it's a wonderful location, wonderful place to be. So now I'm, I'm not on the lake anymore, which I miss a little bit, but mm -hmm. still a nice house. Well, in Hopkinton terms, you and I are still newbies. You have to be here, I think, 100 <laughs> years before we're townies. But yeah. I'm very glad you moved back to Hopkinton. Thank you. You're involved Thank you. in so many things. Yes. Where would we like to start? The schools, well, maybe? I or? Could, well, I could. 23 years ago when I, um, no, 23 years is how long I've been here. But when I came back, my youngest, uh, my middle child, I have three children, mm -hmm. who, my middle child is a son who's now 19. And um, so I moved back when he was uh, one. And at that point, I was asked to join the Cultural Council. Let's start there then. Let's yes. talk about the Cultural Council. So the Cultural Council was so fun because we would look at all of the people looking for money through the arts lottery. Um, you know, the, when you get a lottery ticket, it goes to this Cultural Council fund. And then they support programs in the different towns. So people would submit for funding for a program. I can remember one was um, something, Nick the Juggler or something. And we looked at that and we thought, I don't know, juggling? But you know, it was, it was great to be able to look at the description of the program and think about, is this something that would be great for the town to have? And we only had a certain amount of money that we could decide on. So I was chair of that for a little while, I think six years altogether. And then I joined the Youth Commission. So Youth Commission, I think I've been on about 15 years. And yeah, that, because you're still active in I'm that, I'm still, right? yeah. I'm chair yeah. now. Yeah. And I love that too because youth, uh, I'm a teacher, um, so a lot of what I do is around youth and teaching and protecting and guiding and entertaining. Um, so it's really something I love to do is help youth and you know, provide great programs for them. So one of the things that I love about the Youth Commission is our MLK Day, which is coming up on January 16th. And what I love about that is it's a chance for kids to give back. So a lot of, a lot of our, our youth right now spend a lot of time on their phone and um, not outside as much mm -hmm. or, or doing things for others as much. So this is a chance for everyone to do, you know, as Martin Luther King said, um, to do for others. So his, the quote is, life's most persistent question is, what are you doing for others? So I think in this, day and age where people, kids, I guess, are, are spending a lot of time doing things for themselves or for their friends. And that's part of being a teenager. Um, it's great to have something that they can do when they feel good about giving back. Well, MLK Day is every year. Um, and this program will be shown multiple times during the year. So it's oh, yes. generally like the third Monday of January. Right, exactly. And um, I know it's a very successful day. We have a wonderful community of people that participate in that yes. uh, from all ages. Yes. Um, because I've been there for many of the ones in the past. Yes. And it's great to see the turnout and have folks be giving back to others who are in need right. of 
again, from the youngest, you know, all the way up, and all the different organizations in town that get involved, too. That's right. So I'm looking forward. That'll be a great event again, I'm Thank sure. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. And one of the things we do, a new thing we do is we do, well, it's not, I guess not new, but we do a song circle. So. Um, musicians in town, often youth, volunteer um, and put on a little performance on Saturday at the Cultural Arts Center the Saturday before in the afternoon. So yeah. it's a great program. Well, yeah. since at the time that we're doing this show, it's not that sorry, far. Sorry, sorry. No, that's okay. In January. It's not that far. I was going to say, it's yes. not that far, you know, in the future. Right. Uh, that there must be a lot of activity going on right now to get it organized. Correct. We know just, who's going to be there, the organization. Right. Yeah. We just met last night because it's going to be in a month. Yeah. So besides that, Youth Commission um, right now comes uh, is connected to youth services through the town hall. We, we didn't have that position when I started out, but mm -hmm. part of what we did at that time grew into a youth services coordinator or director being as part of the government of uh, Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. Denise Hildress is fabulous and um, she is she works on um, helping youth and families in town so we're gonna do a big um, cultural event in the spring to have uh, hopefully tables of different cultural um, displays and mm -hmm. interactive uh, exhibits and maybe dance so that we can incorporate all the wonderful cultures that we have here in our town um, to get a little more familiar with the what they have and the diversity that we have here. I've been hearing a little bit about that so I'm looking forward to yeah. it. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of good things going on that day. Yes. Yeah. And that actually another thing that I'm doing is working with Tamoria Saba who is a relatively new resident, but a dynamo. <laughs> and she is, uh, she started something called the Hopkinton Diversity and Cultural Alliance. And we had a discussion meeting um, last weekend. But um, part of her goal is to make all the cultures here feel that they they have a voice and they can speak and 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 discuss is, discuss issues and anything that's difficult or interesting or challenging and uh, as a way of making Hopkinton really be a family and, and a connected place, even though it's growing. Yeah, and that we actually have more in common than we have differences exactly that separate. Because right. all you hear about these days are the things that are separating people. Exactly. And this will be wonderful to pull people together and say we have more in common than the, than differences. So. That's exactly right. Yeah. So that's a very exciting thing that we just started doing, and um, to to go to your point about being an author, mm -hmm. part of what I do now um, as a job is um, work at Elmwood School, and that's part of that's, that is what I do as a job, is Elmwood, Elmwood School. Mm -hmm. And in working there, we have the opportunity to meet the Kenyan runners oh, yes. who come at the marathon. The marathon time, yeah. So the second graders and third graders with whom I work love that day. So I thought, well, the second graders who come in have no idea what we're in for. You know, and, and third graders um, might like a memory or something to remind them. So my first book that I wrote ever, is Kenyan Runners Visit Elmwood School. And um, so, you know, this is, you can tell I just hand wrote that. So this is, this is published through Create Space um, on Amazon. So people could actually get it through Amazon. And I just, you know, I did some pictures and, but I actually took some photographs of the kids experiencing the event, mm -hmm. you know, and put some Swahili words in the back. And that was fun for me f for Elmwood School kids. And then um, the kids, we would tell jokes during lunch, you can tell this is very well read, it's falling apart. Um, yeah. Tell jokes during lunch sometimes, so I realize I have a handful of jokes. Nobody wrote these jokes. So I can put them in a book here for the kids to take out and then read all the jokes. And then the last thing I did, um, there is an eagle mascot at, at Elmwood School um, with whom I had a chance mm -hmm. to become acquainted. And I, I thought it would be fun for the kids to read about the eagle mascot. So it swoops a few of my favorite things. And I just, you know, I just took pictures and uh, uh, they're sleeping on the nest and, you know, the turkey friends and he likes to go sledding in the winter, I mean the spring even because th there's no snow. So it's just, you know, fun for me to think of creative things um, that the kids might enjoy that would also help them. And along those lines, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Jim Cousins asked me this fall, was it at the end of the summer, he asked me if I would like to do a show or he would like me to do a show on HCAM. 
And I said, really? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, um, yeah, I could do that. And I said, could I please do a show about character? So the show is called Character Matters. And I thought of 26 character traits that I would like to talk about and explore so that kids 5 to 15 and really I, I think anyone would enjoy it in some way because it's kind of silly and fun. Um, but we, I pick a character trait and I start out with a character um, such as George Washington. So George Washington talks a little bit about character. It may or may not be me in a costume. Yeah, I was going to say, I saw you with the costume <laughs> on. Yeah. So, so the character talks about the, the character trait. And then I, in, there, I have some quotes that um, go in between all the interviews. And that, that one are, with George Washington, the character was obviously the honesty one. Yes, yes. and that was yes. honest. That's what I started with. Yes. Um, and then I interviewed some people in town. So for honest, I, ex I interviewed the Mezzets because I think they're honest businessmen. I interviewed Bob, who was at JB Service, who has worked on my car, and he's no longer there. He went, yeah, I guess he retired. Um, but he has always been very honest with me about my car repair needs. And then I interviewed some kids about being honest. And then I have the puppets talking about being honest. So it's, it's very entertaining. But I think, really, in this day, when sometimes the adults on TV or you know, sometimes the kids get some role modeling that really isn't what would be teaching them good character values. Um, and I'm thinking of uh, the good character values from scouting, honest, brave, friendly, thrifty, you know, all mm -hmm. those wonderful scouting values, but also other things that we think of when we think of a good character. So what do, how do we want our kids to grow and what role models do we want for them. So I've done honest, brave, kind, um, hardworking, was Johnny Appleseed with a pot on my head, mm -hmm. and um, uh, friendly, creative, and we're working on res responsible next. Being so. responsible. Yeah. Well, I know you're aiming at a certain age group. You said mostly like the 5 to 15 or whatever. Yes. But having watched your show, I would say it's good for all ages. Thank you. Because we're interacting all the time with, you know, with younger kids right. in lots of different situations. Exactly. And I think that the focus and the way that you deliver the message about that particular characteristic, I think it's good for adults to watch it too and maybe help pass it along. Thank you. you know. Thank yeah. you. Well, that is my hope, but I don't, you know, I'm not great at marketing myself and, ooh, I'm so fabulous. So uh, my humble hope is that it's at least ages 5 to 15. But I, th I used to watch Sesame Street when my kids watched and Mr. Rogers, who is the character for Kind in my show. Um, so I got a lot. I mean, I just enjoyed watching the kids' shows because mm -hmm. there is that, there's meaning there and there are things to laugh at uh, or, or with. So thank you for saying that. That's yeah. my hope is Well, I, you know, and the, the message to parents when they watch your program is that we're not trying to teach adults. Hopefully we don't have to teach adults right. about these of characteristics. Right. And we're not, you know, you're not trying to preach them, but you're right. trying to get a message across to younger ones. Right. And maybe they can pick up on some of the things and continue the, you know, with the young people that they know, whether it be a, a child, a niece, nephew, grand child whatever you know it's exactly there's good things there and the way you deliver the messages too like you say you get the costumes going and all. Yeah. I really enjoy it thank I, you thank maybe you. I'm just a kid at heart I, I think I must be too because yeah. it's it's fun for me you know it's not, it's a volunteer thing mm -hmm. but it's fun for me and I feel like I'm making a difference you know when I ran for board of selectmen my 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 slogan was here to help Hopkinton so really this seems to me another way I can help so I help in scouting, I help in the schools, I help, my job is to help kids learn. So this to me seemed like another way I could help um, in a time when it seemed like maybe there were a lot of questions in kids' minds. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, that guy on TV just swore, is that okay? So no, it's not okay. And you know, just to underscore what, what we think is good for kids. Oh, definitely, because of all the things that they're exposed to, you know. Yeah. I won't right. even go into some between right. the TV and the media and yeah, the internet and, and, and the, whatever they can the, access on their phone because you know, they oh, yes, have the just, phone yeah. and the right the music. Some so yeah, anyway. So it's wonderful, I think, for HCAM to have a show with you 
emphasizing the good qualities a person needs to have throughout life. Yeah, so I, li I really like it very much. Thank you. Um, when you were going over your books, though, yes. you went over them kind of quickly, and I want because you, they are very creative. I mean, uh, starting with the one from Kenya, uh, I yeah. mean, the, about the, the Kenya run is coming. Mm -hmm. That is such a fabulous day. Oh, I my mean, goodness. The kids absolutely just enjoy that so much, year after year. And, you know, it's become such a tradition in Hopkinton around the whole marathon and the runners right. and everything that, exactly. you know, have you ever had any runners that maybe didn't want to do it or any pushback or didn't want you know, to any, come into the come into the uh, school or not that I'm aware of yeah but watching them come in I can only imagine that they're exhausted because they're training mm -hmm. and that you know they're really part of a show so thinking from their perspective I hope they understand how how much we appreciate their taking their time and oh, energy do, yeah. to do this because yeah. I know it's a it's a difficult time for them. They've just gotten here from Kenya. They have to prepare for the marathon, um, but the kids love it so much. Yeah, and you maybe know. it's you know it's one of those things that we can tie into the whole cultural aspect and diversity in Hopkinton. Right. And, you know, and talk about and, it. And the other thing, I mean, I I am a creative thinker, so one thought in my head is that. President Obama is related to Kenya. His father's from Kenya. So I've often thought, is there any possibility that he would come to this event? Well, he's going to have some time on his hands. You I'm might thinking. be able to. You That's never I mean. know. Yeah, you never so know. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't talk about that, but I do have, you know, I just, I mean, it, it, it would seem to me to be a great thing, you know, because the Kenyan runners are here and they each talk a little bit about um, their experience and their goals and their hopes, and mm -hmm. it would just be really cool. Well, you have three very uh, interesting and creative Thank books you. there. I'm, maybe you. there's a fourth one in the works well, at I some point. Well, I have a fourth one. <laughs> um, my dad is a singer, and he wrote a poem about the camp that I work at in the summer. And um, it's a song, which I don't think I'm going to sing right now. But the song is about um, the camp. And so what I did was to honor him. He's, he's going to be 88 in January, still alive and fabulous. Um, and my mother's 80, she'll be 84. But it, the song is about the camp, Meadowbrook. Mm -hmm. So Meadowbrook, oh Meadowbrook, summertime's a color book. So I take pictures, I took pictures of the camp, and I put the book together with the, the words from the song. So that's a book about the camp and a, you know my dad's song so that's not and I do I have two other well, I have a lot of book ideas you must be <laughs> one I know you're very busy so you have to be one very organized person I don't know how you have all this time where you find the time for all these things but you obviously make it work well I, and I think it's a matter of priorities mm -hmm. so my kids are priority for sure um, but I have one kids at home. Kids being the kids at school. My children. Yeah. <laughs> my children. Uh, oh, your children. And then my, the, my then own school. children. Okay. I have three, um, but I only have one at home now. She's 16, so she's men, you know she's more independent. Mm -hmm. um, and she goes away with her dad on February vacation, which is when I wrote this. You know, so there's a, if there's a week when I don't have a house full of activity and driving here and there, mm -hmm. um, then I have that week to myself, and that's when the brain says, oh, let's do something fun. So um, Now me, I'd be saying, oh, let's sit back and relax. <laughs> no, I'm not a good sitter. You're not a good sitter. No, huh? I'm sitting now, but not often. <laughs> I'd rather be doing something and helping someone than sitting. And it actually... Um, it fills me with joy to do these things. Well, that, that so. shows. That's obvious. Thank you. You mentioned scouts in there, though, but you haven't really talked about your involvement with them. Well, I, and that is another thing that I love. I love doing, um, I love scouting. Uh, mm -hmm. my, I grew up camping with my family every summer in a tent in Maine. And uh, so when my, my kids were little, they were all in scouts, and I was a scout leader for all of them. Um, and then as my, as my children got older, they, depending on which child it was, how long, you know, some went all the way, some didn't go as far. Um, my son, for example, got all the way to Eagle, but during that process, he had a job, a girlfriend, a car, five AP classes. So Eagle was down on the list of things, and he got to a certain point, and he just couldn't 
continue. Um, but I was the Eagle mentor for the troop, so there was no one else to say, hey, let's go, let's do, let's see what you need. It was just mm -hmm. me. So a son doesn't want to hear his mother say, hey, what about this? Hey, what about this? So, but I can do it effectively with a child who's not mine, you know, and just because they see me as a reminder, not as a nagger. Mm -hmm. so, um, so over the five years that I have worked as the Eagle Scout advisor, I've um, advanced or helped advance 15 young men to Eagle rank. So that that's a I so I feel so good about that, and um, as you should. <laughs> I was asked to be a unit commissioner for Hopkinton, which is just mm -hmm. the person I think who's the liaison between the council and the troops and the and the Cub Scout packs. Um, I was Cub Master for Pack Four for five years, I think. Now, so I have familiarity. Before, yeah, just before the show started, though, I have to ask you, you said yeah. something about a costume you wore for the Scouts where it got, you got really warm. And what was that? And what was oh, it? no, that's something that I, that's a different costume that oh, I wear. Oh, okay. Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. We won't talk about no, that No, I can't talk about it. That's a secret. <laughs> that's a secret? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But, um, yeah. All right. We won't go there then, it, don't we? Uh, so, yeah. Won't talk it, about it, secrets. It kind of has to do with this book. With the swoop. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Another time then. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, well, let's just say that I have been in the swoop's costume. Okay. Yeah. At one time or other. Let's All put right. it like that. Um, yes, and it's very warm in there. But um, we want the kids not to know who's in there because we want them to think that it is the eagle mascot mm -hmm. and, and, and not a person inside a fuzzy, hot costume that okay. that you can only see out of the beak well I can't imagine that there's anything else you have room to do but there probably is is there anything we haven't talked about you want to bring up well the um, the other thing that I that I have done um, is something called Reiki which is a holistic healing and it's an energy work it's not uh, associated with a religion it's uh, but I think of it as hands-on healing so I'm just helping a person to think about how the energy moves through their body and, um, and focus on that, which seems to clear their energy and help them feel better. Now, did you study for that? How I did. did you I was, get involved with that? I was, um, well, I'm, my mom was born in China, so I'm interested in lots of different things of different cultures. Mm -hmm. um, I am a Christian myself, so I believe um, that there is spirit in the world, you know, helping us. I call it God, but whatever you want to call it, it's to me the same thing. And um, so I was very interested in Eastern cultures. So meditation, um, Reiki, there's something called feng shui, which is energy oh, yes. moving yeah, through yeah. space. Mm -hmm. So I just, I like to see, is there anything to this? Does this make any sense at all? Is this maybe something you know, that, that I would like to learn or help other people with. So that's how I got interested, and I did train and have certification, so. Well, it must be working because you're very energetic. Oh, thank you. Love you love getting involved in so many different things. Thank you. Um, so the studying and the practicing of the different approaches, I guess you would call them, or do you, do you meditate, do you do I do, yoga? I meditate twice a day, mm -hmm. and I do Reiki on myself which just means that I hold my hands and I, and I think really people could do this without training in a way. Um, but if you just, if you just hold your hand here and you just kind of breathe, then hold your hand here and you just breathe and hold mm -hmm. your hand. So just concentrating on yourself in a very relaxed way for 20 minutes, I think can do a lot for you. I was going to ask you, is that about how, how long yep, it 20 takes 20 minutes. You? Yep. Okay. And your meditation, how long do you spend? On it's 20 minutes. So I combine them. That's not any kind of twice a day. Twice a day. Twice a day. So morning and so really I do it. I don't think you're supposed to do it while you're lying down because people fall asleep. I but would, I, yeah. <laughs> but I do. When I wake up, 20 minutes. And then when I'm going to sleep, 20 minutes. And I don't fall asleep. It's, um, it's more of a calming down and clearing before I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So. Well, that's a discipline. You've, you're making it work. I mean, because yeah. the first thing in the morning, most people are jumping out of bed, trying to grab that cup of coffee, get their shower, get out the door, get the kids to school, get to work, you know, and you're taking that time. You're, you're disciplined to saying, okay, we're going to do this 20 minutes. It's for me. Right. You know, right. start my day. And then in the evening, it's 
helps you maybe let go of the day and be yes. able to sleep and relax. And yeah, yeah. I may have to start doing some of that. You want to do a show on, on Reiki sure, and meditation? Sure, of course I would. <laughs> of course I would. And I don't, I don't drink coffee. I never liked it. Yeah. So this is just me. You know, I just, I'm very lucky to have um, a good energy and, and positive energy. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I've been trying to stay away from the caffeine, and for the most part I do, but it seems like once in a while now, especially this time of year, yeah. there's a lot going on. Uh, yes. And so every once in a while I think, okay, my energy level is going down. I think I'll <laughs> grab that. I don't drink coffee so much, but I'm a big tea drinker at home, so I think, okay, I'm going to grab that. And Yeah, and, and, I, and I like tea too um, mm -hmm. as a, just, well, in different teas, as I was saying, there's a wonderful tea called Throat Coat that, um, it, that's a traditional medicinals. My doctor recommended it when I had laryngitis. So certain teas can actually help you medicinally as well as just for soothing and calming. And all right, we're going to get you back, and we're going to have a whole <laughs> show on all of these good things Yay! to do, but we're out of time now, okay. and I can't thank you enough for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this program and hearing about the wonderful things that Margie had to tell us. For more information on Margie's show, Character Matters, and information concerning all about Hopkinton, find us on hcam.tv. If you or someone you know is having impact on our community, we want to hear about it. Send us an email, and perhaps you'll find them sharing their story right here on All About Hopkinton. I'm Mary Arnott, and thanks for watching the show today. I'm Dr. Dennis Dimitri. I'm Dr. Monica Burrell. Prescription drugs are valuable medicines and when taken under a doctor's supervision provide effective pain relief for many conditions. But the abuse of these powerful drugs has become a serious public health problem in Massachusetts and across the country, resulting in the needless deaths of thousands of people. If you are prescribed opioids or pain medication, talk with your doctor about the risks and benefits of the medicines and explore different ways to treat your pain. The safe use of prescription drugs comes when physicians and patients work together to promote healing and good health. Medicines cure, heal, and relieve pain. Use them carefully, store them securely, and dispose of them properly when no longer needed. What you do can make a difference. For more information,